Hello. I would like to welcome James Burke to my web series. James Burke is a science historian, author, television producer, and a futurist. He has written for Scientific American, New Scientist, Vogue, Time Magazine, and the Encyclopedia Britannica online. He has created and presented many television shows for the BBC, including the major television series Connections and The Day the Universe Changed. James Burke has lectured to audiences worldwide, including at the Smithsonian, MIT, NASA, IBM, Microsoft, the European Parliament, and the U.S. National Security Agency. He is currently in the process of developing a new connection series about our future. Even in my short lifetime, the rate of change has increased so much that technology only available to super-rich governments not so long ago is now used domestically by nearly everyone. Hello. Hello to you. Welcome to the interview. Uh, Thank you very much. Thanks. When you were a kid about my age, do you think you could have ever possibly imagined that the technology would be available to a 12-year-old to be able to video call someone across the planet and arrange an interview like this? Mm, absolutely not. When I was a 12-year-old, that's hundreds of years ago, uh, there were computers, but they were used only by governments and even then by secret departments of governments they were scientific they were scientific secrets fundamentally and they tended to be you know to fill the whole floor of a building and they had you know security guards and people in white coats and all that stuff and we ordinary people when i was your age had no idea that they even existed so our view of the future like everybody's view of the future was it was a future that, that looked like ours but quicker or something so I don't know whether I ever thought there might be sort of super new pencils <laughs> or super new kinds of paper or not much else even, because in those days also, don't forget, not even everybody had a telephone, a fixed line, that is. Um, so you couldn't even imagine that there would be new ways of communicating to each other personally as we can do now with a cell phone. And television was just beginning to be around more in North America and in, in Canada than in England, where I was, where, where very few people had television sets and they were, you know, really this size and black and white and really boring. So, I mean, you've got some news and, and they hadn't even begun to do documentary films. So that other side of looking at the future, what is it going to be like? What will we see? was not being fed by what we were getting on television. Television wasn't showing us things that made us think, ah, maybe one day in the future, blah, blah, blah. They weren't even doing that. So we were pretty dark ages, frankly. And on that subject, kind of, what, what was your childhood like? Uh, idyllic, really. I mean, first of all, I, I spent the, the years between like, the age of four and nine in a tiny village in the north coast of Northern Ireland, because it was this, it was World War II, and everybody got sent out to little places to live, you know, away from the city, so they wouldn't get bombed. So I spent those years on the beach, and at a little local school in the country, and then my father came back from the war and said, "We're out of here," and we moved to England, and then life just went into fast lane immediately because I went to a town called Maidstone in the southern part of England that had one of those Elizabethan grammar schools in it. Those were schools that were founded in the 16th century in England. This one was 1549. And they were extraordinary schools. I mean, first of all, it was competitive to get in. You couldn't buy a place at the school. You had to pass an exam to get in. And so you were, you were immediately thrown in among a bunch of people who were probably much cleverer than you. And, you know, you had to, you had to push hard. And the other thing about the school was anything you wanted to do, you name it, it was available. You know, any, anything you want. You know, what you want to do, Chinese checkers in Greek, you could do it. So I had an extraordinary childhood in the sense that that school uh, really made me, well, like all schools do, it made me what I am. Um, I'm sure if I had remained at the seaside beach in Northern Ireland, I would not have ended up as I did end up. Also because presciently that little village that I lived in was called Downhill. <laughs> so 
I, uh, luckily, I went uphill. <laughs>